boom, restaurant, meal, dinner, lunch. Now, would you ever have this many dishes? In any Bangladeshi household, if you go there to eat, you have a ton of like curry, 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 curry. Dude, we love curry. So would you call all these a curry? That would be like a pigeon curry? Wait, wait, curry. This, was, this, was, this is a curry. Okay. This is stir fry. This one's a curry. And they all have like bashmi, like, you know, like this is like crispy onions on top. It's a thing. Awesome. So, so not too unusual. I have a not lot of selections, a lot to choose yeah. from. Maybe you would have more vegetable though. Yeah, sure. No, I'm not into veggies, but yeah. <laughs> Me either. All right, where do we start? First, you take the rice. Oh, where's the fork? Dude, you gotta eat with your hands. It's Bangladeshi tradition, <laughs> come on. Okay, can I just grab the fish off there? Just go for it. Or should I use a spoon? No, go for there's it. There's a spoon here. Sure? At least sure? at this point, there's a spoon. <laughs> so we gotta be nice and neat. Oh, thank you. I'm getting hospitality. An assist. Yeah. Unnecessary hospitality. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Unnecessary. Do you know what this fish is called? No. Neither do I. I'm joking, I know. <laughs> it's called lakka. Let me get yeah. you something. Let me load yeah. you up, my dude. Oh man, it's a pretty big piece of meat. Fish. <laughs> <laughs> this is super expensive. Oh, by the way, most restaurants do not serve this because it's number one, hard to prepare. Number two, it's 1200 bucks a kg. So it's super expensive. You see this this small piece? Yeah. This is 200 bucks. I'm feeling it. It's not really even hot. It's just kind of room temperature. I'm gonna just dig in. Oh, this is some big, fleshy, meaty parts though. Look at that. It's got a lot of meat on it. All right, let's go for it. YOLO. Did you just YOLO about fish? Yeah. You only live once, yeah. so eat fish? <laughs> That's like the least extreme YOLO I've ever heard. When you eat this fish, and when the bone gets stuck, oh. you're done for, you're GG. Do you know what's GG? No. I feel a serious generation gap with my sensei. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, this is good. I mean, it's super spicy. Amazing spice blend itself, the flavor's coming through. Tons of turmeric. Yeah, that is satisfying. Like, big ass pieces of meat. Super juicy, fleshy, I love it. That's awesome. Must fry again, oh. must fry. Okay. Oh, there. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, you can try it. Oh, okay. They just brought us a, surpri a surprise food. It kind of looks like it's dead. Yeah, crunchy whole fish. We gotta like cheer on it, okay? Okay, cheer. You did that? Yeah. You did that in real life? No. I just wanna look cool on camera. Yeah, it looks super cool. Yeah. It's like fish sticks. Yeah. Do you like fish sticks? No. It hardly even tastes like fish anymore. Yeah, it's like crisp. It just tastes like oil now. It could almost be a, like a fish flavored potato chip. It is so intensely fried. I like it. Okay, let's jump into this. Oh man, I love this one. What's it called again? Roop Chanda. This is super popular. It's their best seller. And this is one you actually like. Yeah. Is it fresh water? This is fresh water. This one, it has a very distinct flavor. It kind of feels like chicken. There's a huge ass bone in the middle. Like, if you feel it, there's like, oh, sorry, I'm touching your food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna grab uh, it and try not to grab the bone. Oh. Do you see that flavor, that spicy kick? Mm. Oh man, you can feel all that 70 herbs they use. Look at that bite, kind of stretchy, fatty skin on the outside, nice texture. What do you think about the gravy? World class. I mean, spicy, savory, but those words don't do it justice. He's created a new flavor. The skin yeah, itself, the oh, you can feel the layer of fat on top. It just goes. Which fish did you like more? I gotta say, it really tied. That first fish was more juicy and like had a lot of body to it, but the flavors from that second one were definitely better. Yeah. We've got, it looks like it could be a quail. It is not. It is a pigeon that has been wrapped up in such a way that it's like giving itself a headlock. I have a confession. How? Yeah. You've never eaten this. And then you're not traumatized by the fact that we, this was a pet just a moment ago. Yeah, it was an Instagram influencer. <clears throat> and we just made it into like Hotel Nizam special. So how are you supposed to eat this? I thought you were gonna be kind of the local expert. I'm just gonna break it from the middle and eat it. The breast meat is super tough. You know, one thing I noticed, pigeon meat, it's a more darker <laughs> form of meat than chicken. All right, huh? there it is. Yeah, the meat is super red. I mean, you can see it's very nutrient intense. You know, they've been eating Big Macs, French fries, onion rings, Subway, KFC. Kind of tastes like chicken. It's chewier, it's tougher. But man, that's good. Yeah, it's a delicious, powerful yeah. blend of spices. Yeah, you can't really feel that pigeon flavor. The meat itself is just kind of chewy. All these juices that can like fall off the plate, all that seasoning, you gotta pile that high back onto the food. You cannot let that go. That is where all the flavor lives. That's so delicious. You know, I could 
like not have the meat and just have the curry. What makes a curry a curry? Curry is like the spices they use. For any sorts of curry which we go for, we have like a distinct different, 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 different spices which we put in. Okay, what's your question? You've been doing YouTube for a while, right? Yeah. I read your comment section. They all want inspiration or what, like pro tips. What would be your pro tip for me? Oh, for you? Yeah. I mean, it depends on your aim. What's your goal? Uh, if I want to take, you take this as a career, right? Yeah. So for Humble. you, somebody who wants to make this their career, what's my advice? Yeah. I mean, how many things are you focused on right now in your life? A lot of things. Yeah, you have to cut them all out. And just focus on this. That's it. People who hyper succeed at something are the ones who are able to say no to so many things and yes to just one thing and focus on being the best at that. Until you make that kind of commitment, it's going to be harder to get ahead. So what's stopping you from making that kind of commitment? Go when ahead. you're in a country like Bangladesh, uh, most of your parents, they want you to either be a doctor or an engineer, something like that. So if you ever want to go and tell them, hey mom, I want to be a YouTuber, they're going to kick me out of the house. I want to study something like media and communication, which is related to this. Right. But I just can't. They won't let you. Society won't let me. What do you mean society? What does that mean? Like, this is the thing. We have a belief, like, if you're not a doctor or an engineer, you're not doing something. You know, the hardest thing to do, you're not going to change their mind with words. The biggest step for you is you have to kind of go in the direction that they want you to. The rest of the time, whenever you're not sleeping, you need to be pursuing YouTube. Because then once you can break through and actually make some profit and be like, look, I just made more money this month than I would ever make as a doctor. You're your parents' minds will be changed pretty quick. Deception. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you got from what I said? Absolutely. Deception. Oh. Cheers. Cheers.